Well, welcome to the Cut for Time podcast here at the Canton United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Clay, and I'm joined by Eric Stearns. We're back together after a week of uh, being off. I uh, with, with, uh, just want to give a special shout out and thanks to Pastor Steph for joining the podcast last week. Had a really fun conversation, uh, but we're back to dig into my son- sermon from Sunday, uh, clear up some of um, some of the things that uh, were hard about that. It was a very interesting Sunday, and the, the, uh, I'm just glad we have the option to pivot to a video message when it's necessary. So, uh, but uh, just a couple things we want to talk about. So let's get into it. So I, I listened, I listened once because, you know, it's Sunday was crazy. It was Sunday was fun. Yeah, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone just did so well. It was so, it was so much fun because it was just so good. I, uh, I enjoyed, I enjoyed that you know how to read a room. Yeah. <laughs> just send the yep. song in our, on our way. <laughs> mm-hmm. that was yep. pretty good yeah because yep. i remember when when you got up there i was like yeah, do you think he's going to preach much of the sermon and she goes i don't know i think he'll do the whole thing and i was like i don't think so <laughs> sure enough <laughs> doing the whole thing was never even a thought in my mind <laughs> Like even like even the so the writing process this week because I knew what Sunday was going to be like the writing process was so hard because it's just like okay how do I make a bite sized portion that is you know worth even talking about um, you know of the, of the sermon and I had a plan I had, there 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 there's a there's a three minute version of the sermon that exists mm-hmm. um, so, but. Yeah, no, preaching the entire thing was never even a thought because I knew, I mean, between having the podcast and I knew I was going to do video anyway. Um, yeah, there was there was no reason. So, yeah, and Sunday was just full and it was fun. And yeah, it was good. Yep. So, yeah, I was, was I had expected that you would have a podcast version anyway. Mm hmm. Uh, just because I, I I knew how full it was. My goodness, it felt like the Stearns show there for a little bit. You have multi-talented kids, so. Yes, my children are way more talented than I ever will be. So they did an awesome job. They did. As did you. Don't sell yourself <laughs> short there. Come on now. You did a great uh, job. I listened once on the way home yesterday. We home from work. I got to admit, like, I was a little bit lost. And so okay. I was thinking that you could kind of spend this time to explain Kind of, kind of explain the premise and explain it to me a little bit. That's fair. I mean, it was a, it was a harder sermon to write just because I, like I said, I knew what Sunday was going to be like. Um, and then just trying, you know, and Advent is hard to write sometimes because it's the same four themes every year. And what do you do with the same four themes every year? And like, but I, I do, I do like how this sermon, you know, where the sermon was supposed to go about just, you know there is so much peace in there being justice in the world. And like, we're, so we're talking about a peace that brings justice, um, the just peace part of this, of of this. So like, we're not using, like I said, I started off by talking about Fida's quote about, you know, there, we should remove just from our vocabulary when we, when we're using it as a limiter, like, you know, I'm not going to listen to you because you're just a Jax fan, or I'm going to not going to listen to you because you're just, you know, because there's something that's insufficient about you. Um, that's or I'm gonna or I'm gonna look at a task and say, well, I can't do that because I'm just dot dot dot. Like that's the wrong way of looking at just of the word just. But when we're talking about a piece that is just, we're talking about a piece that eventually does bring justice to a situation. So like Israel is facing this exile, and yes, Israel made choices to deserve exile, but God declared that it went on long enough. There is peace in the justice that comes from the restoration, just like there is peace that comes from the justice of who Jesus is. And there is work that we get to do of bringing justice that brings peace then. And it's not easy. It's hard. It's challenging. Like, you know, Isaiah says that this, in order for this just peace to come, every mountain has to be made low. Okay, cool. That seems hard. And every valley has to be lifted up. Okay, also hard. 
you know, but that's what it's, that's what it takes. God is doing that work in us and through us and in spite of us. And, and, and especially in the Advent context, God is doing that work through the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, through the birth of Jesus Christ, through his life and ministry, through his death and resurrection. Like those are all ways that God is removing those barriers from justice and uh, the, remo removing those barriers that would lead to justice if they are out of the way. It all ties back into, you know, the, the exile being this time that needs to be over and God is going to make it so like there is going to be a restoration. And then, then, then and in the midst of that, there's going to be justice for what they've what they've experienced. And that justice then leads to greater faithfulness for the Israelite people. It was a weird week just because it was, you know, there's there, there's not a lot that I cut because I very <laughs> intentionally wrote shorter um, and then also I had the benefit of just setting up a camera after, you know, everyone left after the Christmas program and recording a sermon. Right. So th there were really no constraints. And so, um, I would say the one thing I meant to mention, but didn't was the justice of the worship service that we had on Sunday, because I had talked about it during church that like my, my children's sermons, if there's a lot of stuff happening in church, that's one of the first thing that the first things that gets cut and Everett has made mention that he notices. And a couple of weeks ago, it was, an, it was another one of our, of our, of our kids in church. that was just like, um, pastor clay, you skipped us. <laughs> yep. I did. That's hard. You know, isn't that, that that's, that's unjust. And so if I could bring about a little bit of justice by skipping the, what I said on Sunday, I'm going to skip the big kids and did it. And I made that choice. I, I intentionally chose to do a children's sermon that day and then to let the big people, you know, learn from, learn from the children's sermon as much as we, we can learn from a children's sermon and go from there. So, but that was a, that was part of that, you know, that just piece of, you know, these kids are feeling ignored. And that's hard, you know, and, and kudos for, to them for having the bravery to say something, you know, but then I could, you know, then I could have the opportunity presented to presented itself um, to, to bring about that just piece of including the kids at the expense of somebody else when they are so easily, you know, booted from the order of worship. Mm -hmm. Well, and kudos to you to be that approachable to our kids. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, sure. My children drive you nuts from time to time because they drive me nuts from time to time. But yeah. you, you know what I mean? You're a dad, so you get it. Yeah. Um, yep. But yeah, I think there's a lot of a lot of pastors who probably wouldn't be that approachable. So kudos to you as well. The kids kind of enjoy having you around. So. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I enjoy being around. So you got some good. There's some there's a lot of really cool kids in our church. So. Yep. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, Everett and Oliver took turns like driving me around the church because they would just grab a leg and like pull and, you know, wherever they wanted me to go, we were going to go. I was playing along. I kind of got in trouble, but oops. <laughs> so. Do you want to talk a little bit about just the challenge of Advent and what that's like for you as a pastor who's done it for what, 12 years now? Something like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it is challenging. I mean, because with Advent and Christmas, you're fighting so much nostalgia and like people remember like the highlights and that's what it's supposed to be all of the time. And so like I get compared and, and not in a critical way, but just in a way of this, this is just how this is just how humans work. I get compared to like some of their favorite Christmas memories and like you're fighting against that all of the time. And you're like, okay, well, how do I bring new energy to this? I mean, cause especially using the lectionary, like these, like I was mentioning with pastor Steph last week, the lectionary has been around for 50 to 60 years. And so it's been the same texts for 50 to 60 years broken into three year rotations. And so that helps, but it's still, it's, it's hope, peace, joy, and love. Like it is those four themes. And then Christ, like, what do you do with that sometimes gets to be a real challenge. And especially this Advent season for us in the church is difficult because there's so many other things happening. Like I had one normal week of Advent to plan because last week was special music. 
Palooza, which is awesome and I love doing it and it's the right thing to do. But then the week after that is the Praise Band Christmas concert, which again is awesome and I love it and it's the right thing to do. But now and then the 24th is both Advent week four and then Christmas Eve. So he's trying to how to shoehorn all of it in, you know, and just, you know, without without having to Louise, just without just throwing your hands up and saying, well, I've got a podcast. Because I've, I've had that thought and that's what it's kind of turning into of, you know, next Sunday, there will be no sermon in church. There's going to be music in church for the, for the, from, the, from, the, from the praise band. And they do a great job of bringing the Christmas spirit and the Christmas, Christmas atmosphere. And like, I like planning that for joy Sunday because that is a, you know, a very joyous event and that's what's supposed to happen. But it just makes preaching really hard and it makes planning preaching even harder. Like, you know, like Sunday, I'm like, I went into Sunday with, a, with the mentality that I had five minutes, like tops. I would have gonna, I was going to have five minutes tops to read scripture and to expand, expand on it in some kind of meaningful way. Mm-hmm. <sighs> That's hard for me. Like the five minute version is there. You can get to be too long in your preaching, but you know, five minutes is hard for me. You know, that was, that was our warm up sermon when I was in seminary. Like that wasn't, that wasn't a full real sermon. It's very drilled into my head that sermons are 15 minutes and 30 seconds. And that's what Randy Moss said. So that's what we do. That's what I aim for. Yeah. You know, but don't always get there, but that's my, that's my aim all the time. But yeah, hmm. but it just makes it it's 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 an interesting challenge, especially this year when it's Christmas Eve and and Advent four on the same day. But, you know. It's part of ministry, so. Yeah. Do you do you enjoy the challenge of Advent season? Yes, I very much do. I think that Advent is one of I mean, I feel like I say this a lot that, that that everything is my favorite, but Advent really is one of my favorite times of the of the church year. Um, you know, it, because it is that intentionally focused, so intent is it's so intently focused on different aspects of 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 why Jesus matters. Mm-hmm. You know, like we talk about hope and we open up with, you know, come will come Emmanuel and come the long expected Jesus and like there and I just I love talking about there being such a bigger hope that is found in Christ because sometimes we feel hopeless. And this is like, usually we're into like real winter where it's snowy and gross and everyone's frustrated because everyone, no one likes the weather. And, you know, it, it's hard to feel hopeful sometimes. We can, and, and, and also you're coming to the end of the year where you're just like, what has this year even been? And you're starting to reflect. And, you know, sometimes you get to that reflection part and the year has been awesome. But other times the year has been really, really hard and really, really crappy. And so trying to find hope that 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 something's going to change, that something's going to be better, you know, and then looking to Jesus and saying something was better because Jesus came and something is going to be better because Jesus is present and something's going to be even better because Jesus is going to return. You know, that's, you know, that's where our Advent hope is completely wrapped up. And then moving to the other aspects of Jesus, really, you know, or the, the other the other themes of Advent, you know, just kind of builds on and builds on and builds on to this glorious celebration of Christmas Eve. So back to this um, just peace idea. What role do you feel we play in that? Maybe you can expand on that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that we play a massive role in that because there is so many, there are so many places where injustice still exists in our world. Um, you know, and in the, they they all don't they all don't have to like get us fired up or boil our blood, but like the ones that do that we have that we have the ability to do something about we need to do something about them. I mean, we Mm -hmm. are a part of this. Like God sent Isaiah to prepare, like, you know, to prepare the people, proclaim this message, go comfort my people by saying, yep, this sucks, but it's almost over. Hold on to the hope of that and find peace in the fact that, that it's almost over. You know, there's going to be, there's going to be a way home. I'm going to move every mountain and I'm going to remove every barrier. I'm going to, clear everything out of the path 
in order for there to be restoration. And then when John the baptizer goes on the scene and starts to say, God's about to do something again, and quoting from the prophet and saying, every mountain's going to be made low and every valley's going to, every mountain's going to be made low and every valley's going to be raised up. And it's going to be found in Jesus. God is doing something. John the Baptist was used by God in that way to, to, to really bring that message forth. And now like our responsibility in the midst of all of this is to be modern day Isaiah's and modern day John the Baptizers that go forth and proclaim that God's going to do something. That, you know, that there that there are mountains and valleys, that there are other barriers and there are barriers that we put up and there are barriers that we like that are going to be moved out of the way in order for the will of God to come forward. And so like part of it is for us to re- for part of it is for us to recognize that we are a part of the barriers sometimes. Um, And part of it is for us to recognize that there are injustices in our world. And even if it doesn't feel like we can solve everything, we can find something. There is something that we can do in order to be a person that does pursue justice. And then once, like I said on Sunday, once the dust settles on the change and the chaos of, 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 of barriers being broken down, what is left is a real and lasting sense of peace because things have changed Mm -hmm. and, you know, presumably changed for the better. So, yeah, that's our, our role is to be, you know, to be the workers, to be the proclaimers, to be the ones, you know, yeah. Looking out for, you know, for, for ways that we can be a part of solutions rather than issues. And yeah, even, and then just having a spirit of openness of what God's doing and not be the barrier. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you're like, okay, God, I want you to do dot, dot, dot. And God starts to do it, but not in a way that we expect or anticipate. And we're like, wait, no, 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 not like that. Not like that. You know, Mm -hmm. not in a way that challenges me. You're not in a way that moves me. Yeah, sometimes you need to move. Yeah. So, yeah, but we like our comfort. We like our oh yeah. We just like to stay where we are because it's what we know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we do. We do like to stay where we where we are, and like that's when you know that's why on Sunday, like I talked about, you know, the fact that when when Isaiah says comfort, he's not talking to one individual person; he's talking to the people of God at large. And so uh, we we need to realize that there is a communal comfort that we're that we're striving towards, not just my comfort or your comfort. And like the things that make me comfortable might make you uncomfortable. And you know, but 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 you know, the things that that are good for the kingdom of God might make both of us uncomfortable. And we just have to deal with that. You know, that's just kind of how it is. Have to yeah. you always make room for for new and make room for God to to do what God wants to do and for the working of God's will and for you know you know lost people to be found. Mm-hmm. Well, all right then. Well, so yeah, you've kind of already hinted at what next week is with uh, country Christmas Christmas with the praise mm-hmm. band. So yep. it'll be another another uh, YouTube uh, Spotify um, sermon. So what's that going to be on? Yep. So it is Joy Sunday um, to be ch- to be church nerdy and technical in the way that you all know and appreciate of me. It is Gaudete Sunday where we focus on the joy of the Lord that is coming in Jesus. Um, and so we're going to be talking about how like joy and happiness are different things. Um, you know, in our present circumstances, we can be happy, but that doesn't mean that we're joyful. And like the the birth of Jesus really does inaugurate a new joy into our world. Um, and Jesus being a part of our lives, you know, makes us joyful and not just in a way that's fleeting, but in a way that is fierce in a way that the, the sermon title is fierce joy is our fierce joy. Um, you know, so in, in a way that is fierce and and lasting and doesn't necessarily, you know, ride the whims of, of what's going on in our lives or what's going on in our world. There is a larger joy that we're a part of because Jesus is a part of our lives. So that's going to be where we go on Sunday. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us on this week's Cup for Time podcast. Join us again in church in person at 10 a.m. for the concert, uh, on the podcast for the sermon, or back here for the podcast next week. Thanks for listening to our Cut for Time conversation. Join us for worship in person or on Facebook Live Sundays at 10 o'clock Central Time. 
And now go in peace and serve the Lord.